How's it going, everybody? Yeah. All right. One programming note before we set sail. Uh, we've got one bartender tonight, Tony. He's working really hard. Make his life easier. Just make sure you go up to the bar to order your drinks, please. On that note, please help me welcome to the stage your MC for the evening, Mr. John Reeves. Hey guys, welcome to the Cafe DM's Open Mic Night. I'm going to guide you through this evening. Uh, my name is John Rees. Uh, I'm the second born to my father. Uh, after three kids, he had a vasectomy because he's so cheap, he didn't want to be forced to pay 18% gratuity every time we went out to dinner. So. That's a little bit about me. I also look uh, strikingly like Heath Ledger after the autopsy. <laughs> well, um, so tonight uh, there'll be some new comedians, there'll be some old comedians, there'll be some middle-aged comedians. Uh, so be nice, uh, stick around for everyone, uh, be generous with your laughter and clapping, and uh, I'm gonna get right into it. Here we go. <laughs> So anyways, um, there's a four-letter C word that is just destroying my life right now. Cute. <laughs> Girls think I'm cute. <laughs> How the fuck am I supposed to get some kind of the thing I'm cute? <laughs> uh, when my girlfriend dumped me three months ago, uh, she said, uh, hey John, let's just be friends. It took me uh, a while to realize she wasn't getting a head start on playing her Halloween costumes. <laughs> I still plan on being Chandler. <laughs> I'm going through a lot of buyer's remorse right now. You know, I bought something. You know, I shouldn't have spent the money. I got a prostitute. He was a nice guy, but I... I'm worried about getting attached. So, shit. <laughs> but uh, I found a, a good alternative to um, strip clubs. I, um, you know, they're fun, but I found a place where they pay me and I still get to see a lot of naked chicks. I got a job in a nursing home. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, but seriously, uh, for those who are broken hearted out there, I've got a new plan. You might want to try this. Um, get a pet and name them after the person who broke your heart. You know, if you're not comfortable with fucking animals, <laughs> then just be happy, you know, knowing that their life depends on you. <laughs> that should make you laugh. Yeah. <sighs> But seriously, if I'm ever going to get any action, I need to stop smell testing my chloroform beforehand. <laughs> it ruins the whole night. I went on a date with uh, Burn Vickham once. I said, show me some skin, baby. She said, show me some compassion. I heard she was really hot, though, at one point. I went on a date with an epileptic girl. We went to the club. And uh, the strobe light made her pass out, which was awesome, because I didn't have to waste a roofie that night. <laughs> but seriously, there's other pills that, um, that, you know, that help you get girls besides roofies. Like in the spring, I always carry around some Claritin. See a girl sneezing or like, puffy eyes. You know, they're always appreciative. <laughs> Alright guys, um, I'm going to do a couple impressions with you, I've been working out. Um, this is a uh, middle schooler trying to seduce his priest. But Jesus said, let the children come. Thank you, thank you. 
This is a girl after you told her she's argumentative. No. -uh. Thank you. This is my ex-girlfriend. John, I don't love you anymore. Moving on. Okay, guys. Yesterday was July 4th. Yesterday was July 4th. All right. So I would now like to have a uh, presentation of what America means to me. Everyone, please stand. The crazy shit about it is, best tool with texting, texting makes you a great ass liar. You can lie about every single thing. I was thinking about Tiger Woods, all he had to do was text his wife and she would have believed him. All he had to do is just use simple acronyms, the LOL, the smiley faces, the rolling on the fucking floor. Everyone believes you after that shit. So she could have asked him, okay, did you sleep with all those women? Why no honey, LOL, smiley face. That shit is simple, that's all you have to do, every single time. And not that serious, just put that every single time I'm acting out. And someone can ask you, hey, did you put those naked pictures of Paris Hilton online? Why no, laughing my ass off. That shit is so simple, it's all you have to do. But what's really funny now is that the dating game is changing. And pretty much, I just went on my first text date. I didn't know this shit existed. It's real. If those of you that don't really know what it is, it's basically going on a date, doing those same things that couples do, would just be a text. So if you want to cuddle, you do it in parentheses. So hugging, parentheses. Kissing, parentheses, quotations. That's all you have to do every single time. But I'm on this date with this girl via text message, like I said before. And the crazy thing about it is that she wanted to watch a Lifetime movie. A damn Lifetime movie. I'm sure you, so a lot of females know it was on a Lifetime channel. All it is is pretty much about rape. <laughs> Everything on Lifetime is a rape fest. 2004 rape fest, yeah! Oh. All it is just totally rape. So I'm like, okay, I'm just trying to be a nice guy, you know. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna try to watch it. So I'm watching this, texting her back and forth. She's saying, oh, did you see this part? I'm just going along with it, just LOLing it up, just going along, just trying to be a nice guy, whatever. Then after a while, I get really bored with it. So I start really ignoring her and giving those one word text messages. And you know how people hate those one word responses. That shit really gets on everybody's nerves. So I started making my own acronyms up. After a while it was like IDK, uh, WWESPN. I don't care why watching ESPN because I was straight ignoring her every single time. And I was pretty much just watching my ass, just ignoring everything she said. So basically after that she really just ignored me. 
And what I really came to find, it was really strange how one-word responses don't really accomplish a damn thing. I was thinking about BP and the oil problem. I think that's exactly why they can't clog up that pipe, because they're giving everyone one-word responses via text message. The first week, the government sends them some text message. Hey, you guys, you know what's some really oil situation going on right now? You know how they're going to fix those problems? And BP responds, yes. This one word response. The next week, the oil is getting pretty messed up. BP responds, researching. And finally, the third week, the government's pretty much saying, you guys just really need to get your research there. We're getting everything together. What are you going to do? And then BP responds, mud. How the fuck mud is gonna help you in the fucking pipe? That shit doesn't make no damn sense. All this fucking technology, mud is the solution. So finally, finally after the mud situation, the government say, all right, that's not working. So what are you gonna do now? Be the response in one word, robots. What the fuck? How that shit gonna help anybody? So it went from mud to fucking robots. That's just damn great. All right, it's so fucking crazy, man. It, but I really don't blame you know, the government or anything like that, or people in position of power. I really just blame everyone's parents you know, from the very, very beginning. You know, when you're born, that's pretty much that's, that's a reflection of everything. Your name is everything. Shit, so, quick, quick comment, just don't, make sure your parents are named for something fucked up, because I met a girl today, which her name was just so distorted. Her name was Dissatisfaxiation. And you know, when your neck moves and the neck movement, that's how you know your name is really ghetto. The sad spalaxiation. If your neck moves when I say your name, then it's too damn ghetto. All right, guys, that's my time. Thank you. Let's hear for Trey. Whoa. Let's hear for Trey. First time. Not bad. Awesome. Keep it going, keep it going for your next comment. The young boy, funny guy, and Sally's moving away. Andrew Colson, come on down, buddy. Keep it going. Hey, what's up? Hey, everybody, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Hey, I spent the last year in college, and uh, in college you meet a lot of interesting people. You also meet kind of a lot of boring people. You know, like, I figured out a way to get out of boring conversations, you know, like, uh, it's kind of like Academy Award music, you know, like, get off the stage. Uh, I guess something like this. Oh, see, so your mom's not going to pay for your rent anymore, so you're going to have to move back home. Are you going to have to get a job and start paying for things on your own? <laughs> you're going to get somebody to sublease for you? That's terrible, you poor thing. Um, <laughs> you poor thing. Uh, I like sex a lot. Um, I also like making money. So I was thinking that I could start my own sex business. Um, but the thing is, like, I don't want to have any employees. I just kind of want to do it on my own. And I was thinking about it. There's not a lot of demand for male sex. You know, like, I mean, I could work for Chippendales, but I mean, uh, I'm not quite that hot. Um, and I was also thinking there's the other route where you could go to truck stops and, like, you know, fuck truckers in there campers or whatever they got. Um, but truckers are kind of gross. So what I was thinking is that I'll, you know, move to a nice big city, you know, you can be a uh, very nice, rich, tuxedo-wearing man, and, um, and, you know, I don't know, like, just suck his dick a little while I get famous. <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, he'll help me start my acting career, and I'll just, you know, you look nice. You're a good guy. Um, but I mean, I, I am going to be famous one day. Like, I mean, how many women do you have to kill to be famous? <laughs> like, is it 17? Because I'm pretty close. <laughs> like, are there any single women out there? Are you guys single? I... Do you have a problem with your parents? Do you have a bad relationship with your family? <laughs> I am. Um, I'm not famous yet. <laughs> I'm not famous yet. I, uh, I still have a job. I make $8 an hour. Actually, I work at a putt-putt place. It's indoors, glows in the dark. It's like a dark hole in the wall lit up by black light. And, um, and my manager's gay, which I'm like totally cool with. Right. 
whatever. Like, I, I don't really care that he's gay. Like, it's really not a problem to me. Like, like, it really doesn't bother me. It's, I don't care. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, I sat next to him and he explained the entire plot to the movie Sex in the City. I was like, cool with it. You know, like, I don't give a shit. Like, you're gay, you're gay, you're gay. I get it. But, um, so I don't have a problem with that. But he did cut my hours this week. Um, so, I played a little prank on him. Uh, what I did is I, uh, I waited for him to get off work. And um, as he opened the door to his car, I put a burlap sack over his head and hit him with a club. <laughs> and I, tripped, I, uh, I stripped him naked and put him in my truck bed. And I, I pulled out a yellow highlighter because, you know, we work at a black light store. And, um, and I wrote on his cheek, I wrote, I like to lick it. And uh, I, uh, I put on his lower back, it's like, if your vagina is big enough to fit here, I don't want it. And, uh, and then I wrote on his chest, why, why do I shave my armpits? <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I'm going to be famous one day. <laughs> you know what's one thing I'm not going to do when I'm famous? I'm not going to rape anybody. You know, because whenever somebody famous gets accused of rape, CNN will report that they lost their endorsements. Which, like, how is that news to anybody? Like, Kobe Bryant went to bed at night cradling a Sprite bottle to say, like, oh, come on, baby, let's do one more commercial. <laughs> I mean, it's not news to anybody. Although, you know what would be news, is if a company continued to endorse somebody accused of rape. Like, can you imagine working at the public relations for Sprite and having to justify that? You know, it'd be like, this is the first question after you get what you want. <laughs> I'm Andrew Colson. You guys have a good night. Come on, man. Don't kill all the single women. I need a couple to scare. I'm trying to pick them up. Doesn't really work. Pick my own up. Pretty strong though. Okay, <laughs> what do you guys call a promiscuous moose? A loose moose! <laughs> Alright, let's give it up for this next guy. He's a loose moose. He's a new face, and I'm glad to have him here. Mike Pickett! How you guys doing tonight? As he said, my name is Mike Bigot, and I'm uh, gonna do jokes now. So, uh, you guys ready? Yeah. A little louder? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you guys were good the first time, I'm just talking with you. All right, um, so sometimes I like to fantasize that Neil Patrick Harris is my uh, older, more successful brother. Uh, and yeah, I know I am jealous of his fame and fortune and everything, but you know what? You really can't pick your imaginary family. So. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm glad I'm not black. No, wait for it. Hold on. Because uh, <laughs> I really like fried chicken and I would hate to be self conscious about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I told that joke. Uh, <laughs> I told that joke a while back uh, doing stand up, and this like older white woman came up to me and she was like, I don't think you should be telling jokes like that. Why not? Seriously. She's like, well, those are the kind of jokes that keep the African Americans back. I'm like, look, one joke? Really? Like, that's, that's what's holding down an entire race is one joke? And then I started thinking to myself, maybe if Hitler was funnier, it would have worked out better for him? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I was concerned, you know? So I uh, went up to a uh, boss of mine who is concerned about eating corn chicken. And, uh, and I asked him about the joke, you know, I asked if it was racist and uh, if it was holding him back. And he's like, dude, I'm your boss. <laughs> if anything, that joke's holding you back. <laughs> so far, point taken. Um, afterwards, he then proceeded to tell me a much worse joke um, about when he first moved to Richmond. Uh, now, I gotta remind you, I was told this by a black guy. So it's totally not racist that I just tell you guys what he said. And I hope you guys buy that. <laughs> so uh, when, when he first moved to Richmond, right, uh, he wanted to get a good feel for Richmond and the people and see a place where nobody's trying to front or be something they're not. So he went to Shoney's. 
Because, <laughs> I mean, who's trying to impress anybody at Shoney's? So, uh, yeah, he, he goes up there with his family, and they're eating the buffet and everything, and he sees an older black man come, coming back from the buffet with a uh, plate full of fried chicken and a plate full of watermelon. Now, J James is a, is a young, intelligent, well-spoken black man, and he's not about to raise a fuss up in Shoney's over that shit. But in his head, he's thinking, what the hell is wrong with you? Our president is black. We can't be doing that shit anymore. And he's like imagining the manager of the Shoney's going to the phone and being like, yeah, White House, um, can I speak to Barack Obama real quick? Yeah, I'll hold it. Yeah, Brock, listen, it's Ned over at the Shoney's in Richmond. Uh, listen, man, I got some good news and bad news. Yeah, Biden's going to have to take over for you, man. Oh, uh, there was a customer who decided to send your entire race back 20 years. Uh, plate full of fried chicken, plate full of watermelon. Yeah, no, I know, it sucks, man. Uh, listen. Oh, the good news, um, we are hiring an assistant store manager right now. So, uh, you want to get on that? So this is all going inside, and the only thing that he can think to do at the time is go, really? So he's telling me the story, and all I'm thinking in my head is, so, so my joke's good then? <laughs> um, I like to talk about stereotypes, I like to talk about race. I think being too PC means that we polarize each other, uh, polarize ourselves from each other, we don't really understand each other's cultures. But what I like to do most is mix up stereotypes around racists. <laughs> if, I, if I'm out fishing and a guy in a rebel flag cap comes up and he's like, can you believe our president's colored? I'm like, yeah, man, that sucks. He's probably really good at math and has this tiny penis. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, all those Mexicans are taking our jobs. Those commie vodka drinking bastards. <laughs> One day the Japanese are going to take over this country with their technologies. Well, that and stealing all our white women with their big old dongs. <laughs> all right, I guess that's my time. Thank you very much, Cafe DM. You have a good night. Give it up for Mike Bickett. Oh, yeah. You guys having fun tonight? Well, I did. Uh, Mexican independence, right? That's what today is. Okay. We're going to try something here. I want you guys to uh, just yell out any noun. Proper noun, color, any noun. All right, so when I tell you go, go. Go. John Reeves. Keep going. Snoopy. Any other one? Snoopy. Snoopy. All right, this next guy. If you like Snoopy, you'll love him. Larry Watts Jr., give it up. He's the older brother of the earlier one. What's going on? What's going on? How you guys feeling out there? All right, all right, all right. give it up for John Reeve, a.k.a. Saltine Grant. Okay. <laughs> I was watching uh, some episodes of uh, NBC Dateline. And, uh, Right across the episode with this guy. Uh, if you guys watched this before, it's uh, Catch the Pure Predators. Have you seen it? Yeah. Chris, Chris Hansen? Yeah. Oh my God. You wouldn't think like these guys would really, you know, think about what they're doing. You know, big ass house, big ass mansion with a 15 year old boy or a girl or him she or something with a man giant. <laughs> And they walk in the house, you know, they're like, I'm in here, can I just sit down and have some cookies and some milk? I'm gonna change my shirt, I spilled something. I'll be back. <laughs> and then Chris Hansen comes out. <laughs> I'm Chris Hansen, what have you seen Dave like? Can you tell me, sir, why are you here? You're a 35 year old man. Is this morally right? You, you say in this transcript that you have to try evil. Would you like oral? Would you like to switch positions and try it with another person? <laughs> and they say, I didn't say that. Yes, you did, sir. It's right here in the transcript. You cannot lie to me. I know all things. <laughs> oh, man. Imagine if cartoon characters were caught in this situation. 
for instance, like Mickey Mouse or something. Mickey Mouse walks in. Oh boy! <laughs> ah, oh boy! Where's me? Oh, I want her to touch it. Oh, oh boy! The Chris Ant, excuse me, Mickey. What are you doing here? I thought you were on a Disney Channel or something. Oh, I'm looking for Minnie. Oh. And he goes, he erases himself. Oh, 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 I'm feeling bad. Oh. <laughs> Mickey, how many people you have sex with in the past? Seven. The seven dwarfs. Oh, Mickey, that's bad. That's really bad. Wait. It was Snow White too. So technically, it was an eight way. Damn it, Mickey. Damn it, damn it. A lot of new movies coming out. Uh, I like to make my own movies in my own ways. Um, for instance, uh, check this movie out. Coming this summer in a world, in a land somewhere far, far away. One man, or maybe another man, meets up on a mountain. The sequel, Coming This Summer, Broke That Mountain too, featuring Cat Williams and Paul Rudd. <laughs> Can you imagine that shit? Dude, you should really check out this mountain. It's totally totally the goops. What the? You got me on this goddamn mountain. Burn and sweat. I got to have blood in my shit. God damn it, it's hot a little bit that I'm not gay. I am not gay. Why not? Dude, it's totally cool up here. You should check out the uh, back door. It's really cool, man. Leave us on the ninja. <laughs> all right, that's all my time, man. Yeah. How you guys doing? You having fun? You guys want to laugh?